Welcome to the Hyundai LNC Continuing Education Series. Before we get into our Continuing Education course, I would like to provide some background on our company and our brands. You're probably familiar with Hyundai cars, but you might not be familiar with Hyundai LNC. The LNC stands for Living and Culture, and the company is dedicated to creating a new lifestyle culture with the simple mission of creating happy customers and a more abundant and connected world. Hyundai LNC was formed in December 2018 when its parent, Hyundai Department Store Group, purchased Hanwha Surfaces, the former owner of the Handstone Quartz and Hanex Salad Surface brands. Its U.S. headquarters is in Atlanta. There are many different Hyundai companies and divisions, and most operate independently. Handstone Quartz is the company's flagship product that led to the opening of the state-of-the-art 250,000 square foot manufacturing facility in London, Ontario, Canada in 2009. Many Hanex solid surface colors are made at the company's Texas plant, which opened in 2019. We continue to focus on expanding our North American manufacturing footprint to expand capacity and serve customers better. To learn more about Hyundai LNC, Handstone Quartz, and Hanex Solid Surfaces, visit HyundaiLNCUSA.com. This will begin our course presentation, Understanding the Art of Quartz, presented by Handstone Quartz, a division of Hyundai LNC. Hyundai LNC is a registered provider with the American Institute of Architects Continuing Education Systems and International Design Continuing Education Council, the IDCEC. The program is registered with both AIA and IDCEC. The presentation offers one learning unit with the AIA and one health and safety credit with IDCEC. At the completion of this on-demand course, you will need to take a 10-question test for AIA or IDCEC to receive your certificate of completion. Please note that this presentation is protected by the U.S. and international copyright laws. The learning objectives for this course includes the history and origin of quartz surfacing, composition and use of quartz, manufacturing quartz, quartz fabrication guidelines, and quartz trends and design applications. To start, we would like to provide some background on basic history and introduction to quartz the material or surface, which is an engineered product, and quartz, the mineral, which is the basis for quartz servicing the engineered product, but first quartz the mineral. The process that forms quartz crystals is highly complex and requires immense pressure to form these crystals over the course of years, sometimes thousands of years or more. Quartz crystals typically grow in a silica-rich molten rock in watery solutions of silica and in pegmatites, which are unusually coarse grain crystalline igneous rocks with the help of the hydrothermal process. Hydro means water and thermal means heat. This means the quartz crystals are formed due to high pressure in the presence of charged water solutions. The temperatures usually range from 100 degrees Celsius and 400 degrees Celsius, and the pressures are intense and high the term quartz comes from a German word, quartz, which means hard. On the other hand, the ancient Greeks called quartz krustalos, first recorded by the ancient Greek philosopher Theophrastus in about 300 to 325 BCE. The term was derived from the ancient Greek word kruos, which means icy cold. Together, these words become quartz crystal, in the English language. The chemical formula for quartz crystal is SiO2. Quartz crystals are formed via the hydrothermal process and can be found in three different geological formations. These environments are silica-rich molten rock, which is a cooling down and solidifying. Pegmatites, during the new monolithic processes. Watery solutions of silica under high temperatures and pressures. In general, these quartz crystals utilize the hydrothermal process to add molecules to their surface and grow layer by layer. Let's take a look at how quartz crystals are formed in igneous rocks. 
Macrocrystalline quartz is among the most important elements for the formation of igneous rocks, such as silica-rich molten rocks or pigmatites. These quartzes are either present before the rocks are formed or are developed along with other minerals when the rocks are being formed. These quartzes later turn into quartz crystals via the hydrothermal process due to an abundance of silica, high temperatures, and intense pressures. If you've ever seen lava before it's turned into molten rock, you must have wondered about the reason behind the viscosity. The viscosity is a direct result of flexible molecules that tend to swim through the lava. Another reason behind the viscosity is the high amount of silica present in the rock itself. This silica turns the lava more viscous and also plays a vital role in the formation of quartz crystals. Since the molten magma cools quickly, typically while the volcanic eruption is happening, the period becomes too limited for the bonds in the SiO4 chains to split apart and form ordered structures of crystallized silicates. When this lava cools down, it turns into volcanic glass. Therefore, it can be understood that a high level of viscosity plays a negative role in the formation of crystals and serves as an obstacle in this formation. On the other hand, a low level of viscosity allows the bonds to quickly split and form new bonds of structured, ordered crystals, therefore enhancing the overall process of crystal formation. This also goes to show that silica-rich lavas have a higher chance of forming quartz crystals. If the lava bursts and comes outside the Earth's crust, it will cool down quickly. On the other hand, if the magma stays inside the Earth's crust, it will cool down slowly therefore allowing quartz crystals to be formed. The magma inside the crust will start to cool down eventually and start forming minerals and crystals of different chemical compositions depending upon the nature of the magma and its attributes. Quartz crystals are the last to be formed inside a molten rock or an igneous rock. Therefore, these crystals basically fill out the voids and pockets of air that were left untouched during the formation of other minerals, such as mica crystals feldspar, and cryptocrystalline quartz. This order formation also determines some of the most important elements of quartz crystals, such as shape, weight, and overall dimensions. Additionally, quartz crystals formed inside igneous rocks also offer an onion shape, meaning these crystals come with layers and layers of molecules hardened into crystals. These outer layers take time to form and you can see a significant difference in the color of different interior and exterior layers of the quartz crystals found inside a rock. Quartz can also be formed in hot watery solutions, also known as hydrothermal environments, and are a hotbed for quartz crystals in their purest forms. The hydrothermal process takes place at temperatures between 100 degrees Celsius and 450 degrees Celsius and requires high pressures to form the quartz crystals fully. The cooling process may take up to thousands of years. Quartz is the fourth hardest crystalline mineral on Earth, ranking only behind diamond, corundum, and topaz at seven on the Mohs scale of hardness, and is found abundantly all over the world in a variety of forms. It is composed of silica, or specifically silicon dioxide. It is the most common mineral on the Earth's surface, making up 12% of the Earth's crust by volume. There are 311 million cubic miles of quartz in the Earth, which itself has a total volume of 259 billion cubic miles. The volume of Earth's crust is about 2.6 billion cubic miles. So quartz makes up 1% of the Earth's total volume. To say that quartz is abundant in the Earth is a monumental understatement. Quartz is found in many countries in many geologic environments. The soil of the region quartz is found and affects its coloration, as you can see here with the color of citrine, rose, spirit, and aqua aura quartz. Major producers of natural quartz crystals include the United States, Canada, Brazil, Germany, and Madagascar. The primary source of quartz in the United States is Arkansas, 
Quartz was first mined by Native Americans in the Washita Mountains by westward settlers and pioneers in the 1800s. Quartz triggered a mining boom during World War II, where it was used for military use and communication equipment. Prospectors have unearthed quartz for over a thousand years within the Washita Mountains at Mount Ida. When it comes to quartz mining operations, there are three types, general, commercial, and non-commercial. Once quartz is found, the mining process proceeds as follows. Quartz crystals are hosed with water to remove the clay and dirt. Crystals are covered in a weak oxalic acid solution. Blend is slowly heated to just under boiling at about 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It is held at a temperature for four to five hours, then allowed to recool to room temperature. Crystals are removed and thoroughly rewashed with water. Crystals are then sorted and graded. There are many benefits to mining quartz. In many parts of the world where quartz is mined, the mining industry is the heartbeat of local economic growth and development, sustaining employment opportunities for generations. The Yukon Territory in Canada has developed specific legislation that ensures development, competitiveness, and sustainability of the quartz mining industry in the Yukon Territory, keeping in mind the fragility of the territory's environment and the land in which it encompasses. Quartz contains plenty of desirable properties. It is versatile in color and application beyond surfacing. Pure quartz is colorless or white. However, there are colored quartz. Common colored varieties include rose quartz, amethyst, smoky quartz, milky quartz, and others. Deposits of almost 100% quartz grains have been identified and produced as sources of high purity silica sand. This quartz sand is used in glass making, producing container glass, flat plate glass, specialty glass, and fiberglass. Quartz is a harder substance than any other natural substances, making it an excellent abrasive material. Many quartz sands are used in sandblasting, scouring cleansers, grinding media, and grit for sawing and sanding. Quartz is a mineral that has a high resistance to heat and chemicals. Because it has a melting temperature that is higher than most metals, it is commonly used as a foundry sand in molds and cores of foundry work. Quartz sand is also used as refractory bricks and as a flux in the smelting of metals. An admirable quality of quartz is the crystal's ability to vibrate at precise frequencies. These frequencies can be used to make accurate timekeeping instruments and equipment used to transmit radio and television signals. Optical grade quartz crystals have been developed for a wide variety of electronic uses, including specialized lenses, lasers, microscopes, telescopes, electronic sensors, and scientific instruments. Other applications for quartz include eyeglass lenses and circuits for consumer electronic products such as computers, cell phones, television, radios, and electronic games. Quartz is found in a variety of colors that give it versatile applications. Let's dive deeper into the types of quartz variations. There are plenty of variations that belong to the quartz family. Calcinity is a cryptocrystalline quartz and moganite mixture. The term is generally only used for white or lightly colored materials. Otherwise, more specific names are used. Agate is multicolored, banded, calcedony, and semi-translucent to translucent. Onyx is agate, where the bands are straight, parallel, and consistent in size. Jasper is opaque quartz, typically red or brown. Rock crystal is clear and colorless. Amethyst is purple and transparent. Citrine is yellow to reddish orange to brown or can be found as a greenish yellow. Rose quartz is pink and translucent. Milk quartz is white and translucent to opaque. Smoky quartz is brown to gray and opaque. And carnelian is a reddish orange, chalcedony and translucent. We've covered a lot on quartz, the mineral. Now we'll turn our attention to quartz surfacing. Quartz surfacing has been around for many decades. Most engineered stone and most quartz surfacing is created using a similar patented process developed by Breton SPA, an Italian company that first began in the production of equipment for working natural stone. It was this company that Sir Marcello Tancelli 
founded and then drove to solidify his vision of creating Brenton Stone, an agglomerate stone material that could be mass produced in as many square meters as were required in the same color with the same structure and all at the press of a button. Now, more than 50 years later, engineered stone, quartz surfacing specifically, is one of the fastest growing categories in the surfacing material industry with dozens of brands all kin to the original Breton Stone. Breton, originally Brevetti Toncelli, and later shortened to Breton, and then to Breton it is today, was established in 1963 at Castello di Godigo in the province of Treviso, Italy, and focused on the production of natural stone machinery. However, the company soon began developing technologies and plants for the production of what was once commonly called agglomerate, as it was made of stone fragments bonded together by resins, now known as engineered stone. Originally, Breton stone was made of blocks of polyester resin and limestone, materials that were poured by hand into 30 by 50 centimeter formworks, about 12 inches by 20 inches, to then be cut into tiles. Later, larger 300 by 125 centimeter blocks or 118 by 49 inches were made and the resulting slabs cut from them had a palladian or crazy paving type finish. In the early 70s, Toncelli had the idea to give the material a different kind of look, similar to granite, in micro grain rather than a macro grain with the possibility of producing slabs instead of blocks that needed cutting. And so the idea and the Brenton Stone dream was born and the company was taking bets it would make that dream come true. It developed many new technologies and inventions, all of which were protected by patents. As with all new products, it took time for Breton Stone to make its name, for the market to realize its potential with many showroom installations. Architects didn't know how this resin would behave over time when exposed to the sun and atmospheric agents. The first Breton Stone was characterized by a property that was considered a limit by the market. Despite the fact that it looked like granite, the mix of polyester resin and limestone had characteristics more akin to marble. It was not as hard as granite and scratched. In the late 1970s, Brenton invented the Levy Brenton KG, a machine fitted with osculating sectors for polishing hard natural stones in a production line. This led to the idea of producing Breton stone with hard, silicious aggregates, which would provide a hardness similar to granite, but were previously more difficult to work. In 1982, the company developed plants for the production of slabs made of silica sand, polished with heads, fitted with oscillating sectors. Using this new technology, Breton's engineered stone was as hard as granite and non-porous, giving it much better performance over previous versions. Soon, all the companies using the Breton manufacturing process were switching to silica mixes. In the late 80s, successful commercialization of quartz surfacing began when Breton sold engineered stone manufacturing plants to companies based in Israel and Spain. Quartz surfacing began U.S. distribution in 1998 and in 1999, the Home Depot began offering quartz surfacing, making it available to the masses. The engineered stone or quartz surfacing category of materials has become quite prevalent around the globe since its inception, with over 100 plants directly employing more than 10,000 people and producing more than 30 million square meters, more than nearly 323 million square feet of slabs per year. Not all quartz surfacing today is made with Breton equipment. Others have invented other manufacturing methods, some involving manual manipulation of various processes. But the original Breton process has constantly been improved over the years and is considered by many to be the standard in quartz surfacing manufacturing to achieve optimal quality and consistency. Quartz is a desirable material for surface countertops because of its composition. Most quartz slabs are composed of approximately 93% raw quartz crystals and 7% resin binders and pigments. Typically, they can have up to seven different sizes of raw quartz and are free of fissures and cracks. Quartz slabs are impermeable to water, 
moisture, or bacteria. They are up to two times stronger than granite. The characteristics quartz surfaces hold give it an advantage over other minerals when applying it to countertops or other surfaces. Quartz surfaces are non-porous, stain resistant, scratch resistant, easy to maintain, etch resistant, durable, eco-friendly, and heat resistant. Quartz surfaces come in a variety of colors and design styles as you can see here. Recently, manufacturers have produced marble patterns for a more natural appearance of stone that has become very popular. When thinking about quartz design, all designs can be broken down into two categories. Palette and pattern. Palette refers to the color of the design, while pattern refers to the look of the design. Quartz palette can be broken down into two categories, tone and hue. Tone refers to the lightness or darkness of a particular color. When selecting a design, first see if the color is light, medium, or dark. Next is hue. This is the color of the design. Moving across the spectrum, the colors will shift from white, tan, gray, brown, and black. Combine these two elements to select the best color for your project. For example, a light gray or dark brown. Quartz pattern can be broken down into four categories. Solid, uniform, movement, and veined. Solid refers to any solid color design, an example being white or black. Next is uniform. A uniform design has more details than solid, but the design is consistent from end to end. Movement refers to design that offers variations and or progressions of design elements across the slab. And vein refers to those beautiful marble-like designs with sweeping movements and stunning veining design into the slab. Quartz surfacing is scientifically tested for a wide variety of important performance and safety characteristics to ensure high performance for its intended use in real-world situations. As many as 25 ASTM and ANSI tests are standard in the industry, including flexural strength, impact strength, water absorption, and many others, and they attest to the strength and durability of quartz surfacing. For example, you can see that quartz has passed tests for fungi and bacterial resistance, resulting in no growth, and has passed the ANSI Z124.6.5.2 test, providing it is stain resistant. The ASTM D790 flexural test measures how much strength it takes to cause a sample to flex until it fails when suspended between supports at both ends. Most manufacturers publish their test results in their material safety data sheets. Some quartz materials are rated NSF 51, which is designation for NSF International, formerly the National Sanitation Foundation, that can be applied to materials used in food preparation. NSF 51 establishes minimum public health and sanitation requirements for materials used in the construction of commercial food equipment. The requirements are based on U.S. FDA regulations. Some quartz brands have Green Guard Gold certification. Green Guard Gold certification is listed by the USGBC as one of the acceptable third-party certifications for EQ credit low emitting materials for general emissions, evaluation, and furniture evaluation requirements in the LEED version 4. Visit the resource section in usgbc.org to get more details on third-party certification for low emitting materials. Some quartz products have an HPD, or Health Product Declaration. An HPD can help contribute to lead points under LEED version 4 if the HPD meets the threshold and disclosure requirements as stated in the Material Ingredients Credit Requirements. You can find more details on these requirements and available lead points in the Building Product Disclosure and Optimization Material Ingredients at usgbc.org. Please consult your quartz surfacing surface supplier to inquire about other relevant certifications or designations and how these may also contribute to ESG goals and to LEED or other rating systems such as WELL or the Living Building Challenge. So let's take a look at the manufacturing process. The description of the manufacturing process here is based on the Breton process and equipment. The manufacturing process starts with raw quartz mineral quality inspection in the lab where all ingredients are tested for color, shade, particle size, as well as moisture content.
Before producing on this large scale, the success of each design is determined by creating a lab version of the color. Here all ingredients are blended together just as if baking cookies. With that blend, a small 12 inch by 12 inch slab is formed as per the design idea. With the approvals of recipe and design, then that idea is taken to large scale. So now the design is ready for mass production. Things start off in a receiving department where materials are drawn from the appropriate storage silo and each hopper as per the recipe. All the materials is being pulled out and weighed automatically, then sent up to the mixing department. Here you'll see a series of mixers. This is where the blending process starts. All the raw materials are added, which include up to 93% quartz, along with resin and other specific chemicals. These materials are blended to a very specific timing process and each batch is verified as the moisture content and the successful integration of the ingredients. Once the verification of the mixture takes place, it is then passed on to the next cycle, which then includes a larger mixer, which then blends all four of the materials together, creating one large batch. This material is now set to go into the next process, which is the molding department. At this point, the manufacturer has up to four hours to use this material as the curing agent has already been added and it's already hardening the material. The mold process starts with the distribution of materials where the fresh materials poured into molds. These molds are very special where they've got plastic vapor barriers in between each slab. And what that does is it prevents the materials from sticking to the mold so that the molds can be used over and over again. With fresh materials, team members will monitor the distribution of each slab being poured. With a little over 400 kilograms or 882 pounds of material, every slab follows the same path of consistency. With the completion of material distribution, slabs with vein designs next meet up with a state-of-the-art robotic system that easily forms a unique pattern by creating channels and adding and invading. Following the robots, we come to the most important part of creating quartz slabs. This is the vibro press. Here, three very important steps ensure a solid, non-porous stone. While under vacuum, the material is pressed to a specific thickness. At the same time, the vibration pushes out any trapped air pockets and ensures that all voids are filled to perfection. Once a slab has its form, a visual inspection is completed to ensure color and veining are accurate. At this point, it's time to put the cookie in the oven. Each slab will heat up between 115 and 125 degrees Celsius in up to 45 minutes. The slab is now formed and begins to separate from its molds. Weighing over 900 pounds, this solid stone is still very fragile and requires a cool down process. This will ensure no warping or fracturing. Once completing its cool down cycle, a visual inspection of the slab is done to ensure quality results. We are now at the end stage of the mold department where a semi or rough slab has successfully been created. In creating bundles of eight, the newly formed stones are carefully transferred into the final process of production, the polishing process. The polish process begins by trimming all sides and ends of the slab to meet the standard specified dimensions. Then both sides of the stone are calibrated. 
where any uneven areas are removed and you are left with a smooth surface. A two-step polishing process follows where the manufacturer applies their standards on level of gloss or finish application. We are now on the home stretch. The final step is for a visual overview of each slab by a highly qualified inspector. This ensures that each slab meets quality standards. While tracking the history of each inspection, every slab is tagged and bundled for delivery to a distribution center. Slabs traditionally measure 55 inches by 120 inches for standard size or 65 inches by 130 inches for jumbo. Slabs are typically manufactured in three different thickness sizes, 1.3 centimeters, 2 centimeters, and 3 centimeters. 1.3 centimeters and 2 centimeters are great for kitchen backsplashes, vanity tops, and vertical applications, while 3 centimeters is the most common thickness for kitchen countertops, though 2 centimeter thick slabs are also used in kitchens. Quartz can be finished in numerous ways, creating different looks with each finish. Polished is elegant and smooth, emphasizing the color and luster in the quartz while creating a reflective look that enhances the spaciousness of the room. It requires minimum care and maintenance. Honed has a low sheen and is less formal. It has low light reflection and gives the room a more authentic and raw feel. It is smooth and works with modern and classic designs. Some manufacturers refer to similar finishes as a leather finish. New specialty finishes are coming on the market that have texture and resemble pebble effects, such as river wash. These kind of finishes have been used in natural stone, such as granite, but now new technology is allowing these unique finishes to be created with quartz. At the end of the polishing line, the slabs are inspected for defects and color consistency. Slabs are then loaded onto A-frame racks for shipment. To protect the slabs, they must never be stored flat. Avoid extreme weather temperature conditions and avoid direct exposure to sunlight. There are plenty of advantages of using quartz for your surfaces. Quartz surfaces is NSF 51 certified due to being non-porous and bacteria resistant and therefore, unlike granite, requires no sealing. Quartz surfacing requires no conditioning or polishing. Quartz is stain resistant. Quartz surfacing is heat resistant. It's also chip and scratch resistant. Quartz is easy to maintain and can be cleaned with mild soap and water, and quartz leaves a minimal environmental footprint. Quartz is one of the leading fabricated surfaces for various uses. Let's dive into the fabrication guidelines. Because of its density, quartz surfaces are less likely to break during fabrication. Unlike natural stone, quartz is less likely to chip or fracture when cut and has tighter seams. Keep in mind all corners must have a minimum radius of 3 8 of an inch. When fabricating quartz, you must measure all sides. Measure that diagonal length, Measure the midpoint of the cutouts and setbacks. Measure the clearance from the doors and drawers to the top of the face frames and measure for overhangs at standing appliances for clearance and fit. Make sure to check with the fabrication shop for other important information they might require. You must mark the radius corners, mark the edge details, mark the backsplash, and mark the cutouts. For review and sign off, you'll be checking for material color and edge finish, edge details or the thickness, corner details, backsplash, seam location, and overhang. Now that you know what goes into fabrication, let's describe the process. First, there's a routine surface inspection. Next, the slab is sent to a bridge saw where it's cut according to the template. Then it is off to either CNC or work tables for edge applications, edge polishing, and undermounting sink applications. The material passes through quality inspection to check edges, polish, and surface uniformity. There are plenty of edge profile options depending on what is best for your project and what aesthetics you are looking for. For example, you can choose from OG, Eased, Bullnose, or more. 
In edge profiles, the color and patterns run all the way through the material and cannot wear off, allowing for flexibility of edge designs. Edge details are dependent on the fabricator and are not representative of all quartz manufacturers. As you can see, there are plenty of edge profile options that transform the look of your countertops and can offer increased safety with rounded edges. Seaming refers to connecting two separate quartz slabs, usually creating a corner. Because of the composition of quartz versus granite, quartz is able to have tighter and less visible seams. Equipment such as a Gorilla Grip seaming clamps help create tight seams. A variety of factors influence when it is necessary to seam two pieces of material together. The length to get maximum yield and minimizing the number of seams. Avoid placing seams over dishwashers or trash compactors. Within 6 inches of cutouts like sinks and cooktops and within 18 inches of a finished end. Now let's move on to quartz installation. Like with any premium countertop material, there are a few points to consider before beginning installation. First, check the site access, including parking and unloading areas and entrance gates and front door sizes. You must inspect the stability and rigidity of floor and wall areas under and around the cabinet where the new surfaces will be installed. Note electrical and plumbing positions and any irregular wall conditions. When using adhesives with your quartz surface, there are two types of silicone used in a natural quartz surface installation. 100% pure silicone or paintable silicone. Colored silicones can be used to caulk splash to countertop connections, and a semi-transparent or translucent silicone tends to take on the color of the quartz to create a more acceptable caulk joint. One of the great benefits of quartz surfacing is that the care and maintenance of quartz surfaces is simple and easy. For day-to-day -day cleaning, mild soap and water works great. Rubbing alcohol and water solutions may also be used as an option. Using a non-abrasive cloth when cleaning is recommended to avoid dulling the surface. Non-polished surfaces such as honed leather, mat, river wash, and others may require more daily maintenance and more frequent cleaning than standard polished finishes. Of course, there are a variety of substances that may require special attention when cleaning quartz surfaces. Removing substances such as cosmetics, oils such as olive or canola oil, hard water deposits, marks from metal kitchen tools and pots and pans, soap stains, metal rust stains, ink, stains from food, and others may require treatments beyond the day-to-day -day cleaning methods. Consult the manufacturer for specific recommendations on cleaning methods and any recommended cleaning products. Now let's take a look at trends in quartz countertops. Using quartz for kitchen countertops has been increasing in popularity for decades due to the material's many benefits. Let's dive into the recent trend in using quartz countertops. In recent years, the trend in kitchen aesthetics has favored more neutral tones in cabinets and countertops, including white, black, gray, brown, and beige. Popular quartz countertops colors include taupe, cream, and white variations. Keeping a neutral tone throughout the space creates an open and airy atmosphere in the kitchen. Another design trend is mixing designs, the mixing of countertop colors in one space. Just as designers are mixing various colors of cabinetry in the kitchen with different colors or finishes on the uppers and lowers or on the island, it's becoming more popular to mix two colors of quartz countertops in the same kitchen. An example is one color on the outer countertop and another contrasting color on the island. This provides visual interest and play off of the variety of cabinet colors and finishes. Designers are even mixing various countertop finishes in the same kitchen, such as leather and polished. Dual countertop colors may also provide an effective visual treatment in larger commercial spaces as well. Another trend is oversized kitchen sinks. Kitchen sinks are often overlooked when it comes to countertop design. Many trends are showing homeowners are moving away from the popular stainless steel kitchen sinks and opting into installing an oversized or farmhouse sink instead. Quartz is a popular choice to use around this design of sink because it's non-porous and stain resistant. 
Many individuals are drawn to quartz countertops because of their eye-catching pattern seen in their lines and veins. This unique design adds character to the countertop rather than choosing a solid color. Modern designs and decors complement textured quartz and creates a more dramatic look. Quartz has expanded past its use in the kitchens as countertops. Homeowners love the look of quartz for their kitchen backsplashes because of its bold look. It creates a more textural and styled look compared to the more traditional use of tile. Perhaps more importantly, the functionality of the homogeneous surface and no grout lines allows for easy cleaning and maintenance as well as higher level of durability and longer life. Open shelving is hot in kitchens and other spaces and increasingly quartz is used for shelving. It provides a highly coordinated look with the countertop and an added measure of durability and long life. Fabricators should always refer to the manufacturer's installation instructions for shelving installation. Traditional quartz countertops usually feature a polished finish to have a clean and reflective aesthetic. As more rustic design trends rise in home decor, more homeowners are choosing to have honed or leathered finished quartz countertops for a matte, warm, and relaxed vibe to their kitchen. Honed or leather quartz creates a warmer ambience and rustic feel. Waterfall edge countertops are becoming more popular for homeowners. This style features sweeping quartz slabs that create a waterfall effect over the edge of the countertop or kitchen island. This look is popular because it creates a pleasing aesthetic of quartz design extending from the countertop vertically to the floor. Waterfall edge countertops are achieved by seaming two quartz slabs together to create an illusion that is one solid piece of quartz. Mitered corners can be created by skilled fabricators and create a cleaner look. Built up edges make the countertop appear thicker than it really is to provide a more dramatic design effect. Design and executed masterfully here by Nashville based designer Lori Paranjape and fabricator Smoky Mountain Tops. Quartz is increasingly used in shower wall and other vertical applications since it is non-porous, seamless, and aesthetically pleasing. Natural stone is porous, while tile requires grout which can degrade over time, so naturally quartz provides a highly functional and beautiful solution in showers. Some builders and their clients even carry the quartz beyond the shower walls and extend to other walls, as in this owner suite bath by Ohio builder Guzzo and Garner. Quartz tub surrounds provide a beautiful and moisture resistant non-porous service for a very wet area. It can be used in both vertical and horizontal applications around tubs. Quartz offers a highly functional solution for wet areas like this bar in a family entertaining area, also by Guzzo and Garner. The best way to see the benefits of quartz is seeing the capabilities of quartz countertops in real-world applications. Let's view a few examples of projects containing different variations of quartz surfaces. Quartz surfacing is used as the main countertop as a durable and attractive surface in this Perkins & Will Atlanta Design Market & Cafe Star Provisions. Quartz is perfect for food surface areas as attested to by many brands earning NSF 51 certification. Dual islands provide a dramatic and functional foundation to this kitchen on the Delaware coast which features quartz with calicotta marble type veining built by Marnie Ausler of Marnie Custom Homes, designed by kitchen and bath designer Jennifer Gilmer and fabricated by The Granite Place. This Brooklyn, New York kitchen, designed and renovated by the Brownstone Boys for influencer Cynthia Andrew, features waterfall edges on the island and quartz countertop backsplash in the open concept design filled with natural light. The dramatic but simple black and white design theme is carried throughout much of the home and white countertops with black veins set the stage. Shower walls made of quartz are highly functional durable and easy to clean. Many quartz designs mimic the beauty of natural stone such as marble but offer a superior level of moisture resistance compared to natural stone since natural stone is porous and requires sealing. 
quartz surfacing is used as open shelving in this cozy New York kitchen designed by Mallory Fletchall of Reserve Home. Quartz was the family-friendly solution for Chicago designer Ash Anderson who wanted the most natural simulated marble look in quartz. A large island gives her family plenty of workspace for meal prep and entertaining. Family friendly was also a driving theme for San Antonio based designer Kim Spradling Wolf in her renovated kitchen featuring a soothing color palette and natural finishes, including a river wash finish on the quartz countertop. Commercial spaces like this reception area benefit from the durability and the beauty of quartz. White quartz with suitable gray veining helps this reception desk provide a soothing welcome. Laundry rooms demand durability, easy care, and resistance to moisture, so quartz is becoming the standard here, as shown in this clean and inviting laundry room by Minneapolis firm JCAF Design Build and Reinvent. Quartz countertops blend seamlessly with this airy, light-filled design in the stunning Gordon Dunning Design Kitchen in Atlanta, where the white countertops are carried into this playful beverage bar area. The team also included contractor Ailer Holmes, cabinet dealer and kitchen designer Dove Studio, and fabricator Inman Park Marble. Quartz countertops with unique textural finishes like this gray quartz with river wash finish complement neutral spaces like this James Judge Design Kitchen in Phoenix, Arizona that uses texture to create contrast and drama. Quartz countertops are at home in corporate environments and they provide a neutral and functional backdrop in several spaces within the new Habitat for Humanity headquarters in Atlanta, designed by Nelson Worldwide. So here are four key takeaways from our presentation. Quartz is the fourth hardest crystalline mineral on Earth and is one of the most abundant minerals on Earth. Quartz as a mineral has a high resistance to heat and chemicals. Quartz slabs are impermeable to water, moisture, and bacteria. And quartz is stain and heat resistant. Thank you for watching our continuing education video on understanding the art of quartz. Presented by Handstone Quartz, a brand of Hyundai LNC. For additional information, visit HyundaiLNCUSA.com. For inquiries, send us an email at info at handstonequartz.com or call us at 888-426-9421. If you're an AI member and would like to receive credit for this course, you will need to take our 10 question course test. Additionally, if you would like to receive a certificate of completion, you'll need to take the test. You must get at least 8 out of 10 questions correct to pass. For IDCEC, an IDCEC identification number used to take the CEU is required for the provider to record your attendance on your behalf. To receive credit for this course, you must get 80% or higher on a 10-question course test. This test will be administered at the end of the CEU via a web form.